my name is Sang Hee Chan, but my main name is Sang Hee Lee. I was born 1932. City called Wonju. It's a uh, Gangwon-do, uh, not too far from Seoul. And um, I attended six years of primary school under the Japanese occupation. My name is uh, Kiyomoto Eiko. We had to change all our name. At that time, we were not allowed to speak Korean at school at all. We were speaking Korean at home, but my father did not really explain what's going on uh, with Japanese occupation, so we didn't know. Almost at the uh, end of the war, at school we didn't study. We didn't have a chance to study. We had to work hard for Japanese soldiers' closings and uh, blanket surprising. We had to do it instead of studying. That's uh, about four, four months. 1945, uh, World War II is ended. That time I was in uh, middle school at Seoul. That time everybody on the streets, they were yelling, free, free, manse. So I didn't know what that means. So I came home, I asked my father, then he explained. Then we start to, to learn, everything changed. My high school really, under the Japanese occupation, we had no financial problem, but uh, after that, we had a tough time. My school had a tough time. So they had a lot of land to north. So, but its problem had between north and south all, already that time started. So, so my dormitory was shrink and shrink, shrink. About 30 people is left. We had hundreds and hundreds of people in dorm, but school couldn't help us. But I had to go through there until my senior year. Then it's a uh, Korean War broke. Everybody was so scared. We thought uh, North Korean come, they're gonna rape us, they're gonna kill us. We were so scared. So everybody went go to their relative in Seoul, but about five of, five of us didn't have place to go because I had two uncles, they were kidnapped. North Korean, my, one of my uncles kidnapped. The other one is just hide it. July 25th, 26th, I think, all of a sudden, a North Korean soldier came to our dorm. So they came about 45, 45 to 50 Soldiers came. They were all officials. And then they were really not so wild and so, so bad. They playing piano in our music hall things. They playing piano and they sing us very, you know, classic songs and everything. So, but we still so afraid. So we had to hide under the heating system. It's under the, under the space, so we had to hide there. And then we found they were okay, so we came out. They were, they were so kind. These uh, soldiers were trained uh, to uh, brainwash all the students. So they're smart and they trained. But I, I was stuck in dorm, so I have no choice. So one day, my brother was in Sour, and she didn't have place to stay. So she, he came to my dorm, what, he, uh, what I'm gonna do. So I, I was thinking, maybe one of my uncle, between my, uh, my hometown and between the Seoul and hometown, in the middle of this called uh, Yoju, he owned a brewery. So he had a lot of grain that time. But he is a very kind man, he refused to work with Japanese. His rich people, they all killed or kidnapped. But he's from very rich family and educated. But his employer liked him because he was so nice to them. 
So he was safe. So I sent my uh, brother to find that place. He didn't come back. I sent him there, but he didn't come back for one week. One week. So I was so scared. I was worried. But that time, my principal from North, he, he, she was the uh, same, my high, high school graduate. And then she was pretty close to me. And I told my story. My brother is, is in, in Norway. I, I had to find out if he's you know, OK. So at that time, we couldn't go around without pass in my age. So I asked her to give me the pass. So I had to work two days to fi finally find my uncle's place. And then <laughs> when I went there, my mother and my brother was there. But my mother refused to send my brother to get me because she was so afraid she's going to lose uh, the son, and maybe I was changed, brainwashed from those people. Two of my friends left still there, you know. So I, my, my uncle said, you have to go get them. I have enough grain to feed them. So my mother says, no, 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 you, you cannot, I cannot let my son and my daughter go back to that. But my uh, uncle insisted. So I and my brother came back to, co to Seoul, walked to two days. I made a big bristle and everything. But these two girls already brain by brainwashed by them. Mm. They didn't want to come with me. We had to left without. All I got is uh, my old, 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 some pictures from my dorm. I took picture with these two girls. That's the only thing I really saved. After that, uh, Americans was uh, pushed back North Korean to the Pyongyang all the way. And then January 4th, so we had, they came back. It's a lot of uh, Chinese soldiers. B-29, that time, uh, bombed whole city in Wonju. But my house was in the middle of the city. So we lost everything, not, not even a piece of paper. So we didn't, know, we didn't have a place to go. So my aunt had a you know, relative house. So we, we stayed there. Then that time, it's January 1st, everybody had to escape from on Jew and Seoul everywhere, to South. That time we were lucky, some Korean army uh, people helped us to put in a train, but for the food, food and everything. In top, everybody was trying to come. All of a sudden, one, one little girl fell and they said, they they passed away. She passed away. So we were crying. But so many people wanted to come climb up to that train, but they couldn't because there is not enough room. Then we came to Tegu. One small room we found, finally. Nine people were staying that time. But we, have no, we, don't, we didn't have any money. We were also everything, my, my house was born down. So we made a songpyeon, it means some little Korean cake. So my aunt sold it in market. Then they said, oh, Seoul Azuma, songpyeon is so good. So we survived. That's the way we lived in Daegu. One year passed. I had to go to, uh, to school to study. That time, Tegu has a uh, college uh, called Tonshi Yon Hap Tehak, means uh, wartime, everybody, all different kind of school together. At that time, not too many, they had only 
Korean literature and English literature and uh, law school and uh, some kind of engineering. So I had to apply to English literature. That time, really, we didn't really study much, but we had, you know, but I had to go to school anyway, so I had to go to school. I met my husband that time. He was, uh, he was a Seoul University a freshman, but he didn't know how to come to South because that age people go to army. But that time they had a Sawan Academy. That's the only way they can come to South. So my husband really applied for the Air, Air Academy. So he was, uh, he made it 11 to 1. <laughs> so hard. But my mother-in-law respect because he, he was, his best friend keep dying when they flying, right? So he had to change to traffic control course. So he took over F traffic control tower in Tegu. That time, the, his salary is so low. <laughs> so we had two sister-in-law. There is no way to send them to a college, but we had to. So my mother-in-law insisted me to go to work, but there was no place to work. Then one day she read a Korean paper. There was an advertisement, uh, Eighth Army. That time, I, I, my, my daughter was born. Uh, we were so poor, but my mother-in-law was insisting I have to apply for the a clerk job, Eighth Army post office job. So seven to one, I made it. So, so I worked eight years. And then I helped my two brothers, I mean sister-in-law, the schooling. So they both finished college. When uh, Korea was really booming, to start booming, in Korea we had to have some, uh, had to join with FAA. The, my husband is the only one who can attend there. Air traffic control uh, knowledge, nobody has that time. So he was a very important position, but he couldn't cope with this uh, big power, you know, money to and power. So in between, he had to do bad decision. He couldn't do it. So he decided to come to Korea, I mean, United States, study dispatch school, dispatching school, six months course. But he, you know, he was so lucky, he, he found some job. It's called Elspo. It's like a uh, New Jersey's uh, commuting, commuter airlines. Uh, his boss asked me, why you are alone if you have family? So then it's so hard to come from Korea to bring the family. Then, oh, no problem, I want to fix it. We had a paper, it's called parole. So without passport, we can come. They paroled out. So Chini and I came with parole, not even pass with post passport. We were so lucky. And then when we came, he lost his job because Elspo is bankrupt. <laughs> so I, and I had to find a job to survive. So one week later, Chini and my husband and myself, we looked at the paper and circled, and the first step I went to uh, some uh, called Sam Frax. It's a, a very famous art material store. Then we, I made it, so I got the job after one week. It was so hard because I have no, not art, art background. Then they found out I can do in more res register, I can work in there. So I was really helped because I, I, I know how to do the register things. So I worked there eight years. And then I, I sent Chinyi to uh, public school. But she was pretty good. So she it was, after a few years, she was a, Bar Baradetirian, she was. 
and then she made two. Uh, she was she was in Yale, so oh. I think I did and suffered enough. <laughs> 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 my name is Sang Hee Jeon. This is my Korean American story. <laughs> <laughs>